the wireless switch is, is getting the power and it will take a while to boost up how to connect an IP camera system to a network to have the remote access. The customer has installed nine IP cameras in his factory. All those cameras are connecting to this PoE network video recorder. It works well. He can watch the live videos from those cameras, play back the footage on this network video recorder. The whole system is not connecting to the internet. But now he wants to have the remote access to these cameras. He wants to watch those cameras when he's visiting the customer. The problem is there's no internet service in this factory. There's internet in the second building. It is about 150 feet between these two buildings. The client doesn't want to pull the cable over the sky or bury the cable underground to bring this network video recorder to the network in the second building. So it makes the wireless technology become almost the only option. In this video, we will talk about how to use the wireless bridges to connect the network video recorder to the modem in the second building. We also will talk about how to determine the bandwidth to carry these 9 IP cameras in the wireless bridges. Alright, now let's get started. Before we get into the detail, I want to say we have built a community for IP cameras, access points, solar panel systems. I've put the link in the description below. You guys can ask questions in that community. The client has installed my IP cameras. I took three IP cameras to demonstrate. Those three cameras are connected to this PoE NVR. The PoE switch is built into this network video recorders. It provides the PoE power and the network connectivity to all these cameras. The benefit to use the PoE NVR is we can remove the PoE switch, but it may also lose the benefit from the network topology, since all those cameras need to come back to this PoE network video recorder directory. And now we need to connect this network video recorder to the router in the second building to have the remote access. I'm going to use one pair of wireless bridges to set up the wireless connectivity between these two buildings. The wireless bridges usually working in pair. We have one master and one slave. One master can talk to multiple slaves. But since we just have one pair's connectivity in our case, it doesn't matter where to put the master or where to put the slate. Now let's install one of these wireless bridges and connect it to our network video recorder. The wireless bridges accept the DC input or the standard PoE input. I'm going to connect these wireless bridges to one of the PoE ports in our network video recorder. Let's use this short patch code to connect the remain PoE port and connect another end to the PoE port on these wireless bridges. The wireless bridges is getting the power and it will take a while to boost up. Let me put this wireless bridge on this bracket so it can face the wireless bridges on the second building. All right, now let's move to the second building and install another wireless bridges and connect it to our router. This is the router in the second building. The router is connected to the ISP provider to have the internet access. Now I need to connect these wireless bridges to this router to bring the internet to the factory so the network video recorder can have the remote access. First, let me put this bridge on this bracket. We don't have a PoE switch in the second building, so we cannot use connect these wireless bridges to this router directly since this router doesn't provide the PoE power. We are going to use this PoE injector. This PoE injector is included in the package. There's two ports. One is the PoE port, another is the LAN port. We will connect this PoE port to our wireless bridge and connect the LAN port to our router. And first, I need to provide the AC power to this PoE injector and use a short patch code to link the LAN port to our modem to have the internet access and then use another short patch code to link the PoE port to our wireless bridge. 
you take the same PoE port on this wireless bridget, now the wireless bridget is getting the power. It make it take one or two minutes to boost up to establish the connectivity with the wireless bridges in the factory. Both wireless bridges are pre-configured. We don't need to touch the setting, but you also can manually change the configuration. There's three important parameters. The first parameter is the SSID. The SSID is the name of the Wi-Fi from these two wireless bridges. Both sides need to maintain the same SSID. The second parameter is the password. They need to have the same password. And the last parameter is the frequencies. They need to run on the same frequencies. Now the wireless bridges is up. Let me test the connection with the mobile phone. I can see all three cameras on this mobile phone. This mobile phone is connected to this Wi-Fi. Let me turn off the Wi-Fi and use the cellular data to test the network connectivity. It took a little bit longer, but I still had the live video from those cameras. It is working good. We have established the wireless connectivity between these two buildings and bring the network video recorder to the internet through the modem in the second building. The one thing I didn't talk about is the actual bandwidth between these two wireless bridges. If you read the specification of these wireless bridges, we will see the data is about 300 megabit per second to 350 megabits per second. Be careful, this is the test result in the ideal situations. In the practical setup, you probably not get 300 megabit per second or 350 megabit per second. Since even there's clean side between the trans the, these two wireless bridges, the frequency from other Wi-Fi device still can interfere with the transmission and receiving. Moreover, the rain or the snow still will weaken the bandwidth. If you stop the, some part of the transmission and receiving, so what is the actual result we can use from the wireless bridges? There's no accurate answer, I'm afraid. But I can give you some advice. Simply, you can devise the ideal result to three, then that is the actual bandwidth you probably can use. For example, let's say this actual result, the ideal result from these two wireless bridges is 300 megabit per second. We device 300 to 3, we got 100 megabit per second. That is the safe result you can use in the practical setup. There's one possible issue I want to point out in this setup. At the beginning, I've connected these wireless bridges to one of the PoE ports on this PoE network video recorders, right? It works, but it may not work in your case. It depends on what kind of PoE NVR you have. This is the PoE NVR with the simple integration. The PoE switch is simply connected to the motherboard of the network video recorder. If the PoE NVR you have has the highly integration, the PoE port only allows the PoE cameras to pass through. This setup is not going to work. Then we need to connect this wireless bridges to this LAN port instead of the, this PoE port and use this PoE injector to power these wireless bridges. All right, that's all for today's video. If you have any question, please post your message in the comment section below.